Hi, I'm Chiu Ping Wang from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. I'm going to present the work All Story Flash Caching with Deduplication and Compression. This is a joint work with folks from Harbin Institute of Technology Shenzhen and NEC Labs. Flash-based solid-state drives, as known as SSDs, are faster than hard disk drives and feature better reliability. However, they have limited capacity and endurance. Flash caching is to accelerate HDD-based primary storage by caching frequently accessed blocks in flash. Two storage techniques are widely used to reduce storage and I.O. overheads in storage systems. Deduplication, a coarse-grained storage saving technique, operates in units of chunks that are of either fixed or variable size. In this work, we focus on fixed size chunking since it already provides good IO deduplication ratio and fits better to flash units. Deduplication computes fingerprints using cryptographic hash functions, for example, SHA-1, based on the content of the chunks and then references identical logical chunks that have same fingerprints to one physical copy. In practice, the collision rate for fingerprints can be neglected. Compression, on the other hand, is more fine-grained. It operates in units of bytes and transforms chunks into fewer bytes by identifying the patterns in each chunk. A general architecture for a deduplicated and compressed flash cache is shown below. Here, we use LBA, logical block address, to represent the chunk address in HDD. FP, fingerprint, to refer the chunk fingerprint and CA chunk address to refer the address of cached chunks in the flash cache. To manage the deduplication and compression functionalities, we need two index structures, namely LBA index and FP index. The LBA index records the LBA to the FP of the corresponding chunks. The FP index transforms an FP to the CA and the compressed length of the cached chunk. For red back cache, an additional dirty list is used to maintain the mappings for the dirty data. Inside the SSD, we store cached compressed chunks that are of variable size after deduplication. Inside the HDD, we store the fixed size original chunks. To read a chunk from the system, we first look up the LBA index to find the FP given its LBA. Then, given the FP, we try to find the CA of the chunk in the FP index. If such a CA is found, we read the chunk from the cache. To perform a deduplication, we look up the FP index for a match. If the FP exists, then the chunk is a duplicate. To write a unique chunk after deduplication, we first write the original chunk into the HDD if the cache adopts a write-through policy. And then we compress the chunk and write it to the SSD cache. However, a major problem raised directly by deduplication and compression is the memory amplification of the index structures. Suppose we have a 512 gigabyte SSD as the cache storage on top of a four terabyte HDD working set. Assume each LBA and each CA cost eight bytes respectively. Each FP is 20 bytes using SHA-1 as the fingerprint algorithm, and the compressed length is four bytes. In a conventional flash cache, which only needs to map LBAs to CAs, the memory overhead is 256 megabytes. While for deduplicated and compressed flash cache, since we need to detect potential duplicates for all chunks, for the LBA index, the memory overhead is around 3.5 GB. For the FP index, the memory overhead is 512 MB. In total, this overhead accounts for 16 times memory amplification compared with the conventional flash cache. This amplification can be even higher if we use SHA-256 as 
the fingerprint algorithm. Existing work on deduplicated and compressed flash cache either focuses on the solution for compressed data management or deduplication aware cache algorithms. However, both of them suffer from the memory amplification problem we referred. Our contribution is all-story cache, a deduplicated and compressed flash cache with all-story memory efficient management. It addresses the problem of memory amplification using three proposed techniques. Bucketization, which incurs no overhead for address mappings via hashing chunks to storage locations. Fixed size compressed data management that does not need to track the compressed length of chunks in memory. Bucket-based cache replacement, which performs cache replacement policies independently in each bucket and leverages count mean sketch for low memory reference counting. We also conduct extensive trace-driven evaluations and prototype experiments to validate our design. The main idea of bucketization is to leverage hashing to partition both the index and cache space. For the in-memory structures, we have LBA index and FP index. For the on-flash structures, we have metadata region and a data region. We also store partial keys, that is prefixes in memory, instead of full keys for further memory savings. The layout for bucketization is as the right figure. The entries are firstly hashed into equal sized buckets with each consisting of fixed number of slots, for example, 128. For different structures, we either store mappings or data in each slot. In the memory, we have LBA index and FP index being bucketized. Specifically, the buckets are located using the suffixes of hashes that are computed based on LBAs or FPs. After matching one bucket, the corresponding mapping is searched in the bucket by matching each slot against the prefixes of the hash values. As a result, in each slot of the LBA index, we store LBA hash prefix as the key, FP hash as the value, and a valid flag indicating whether the slot is valid or not. In each slot of the FP index, we store an FP hash prefix as the key and a valid flag. To find the CA of a cached chunk, each slot in the FP index corresponds to a storage location in flash. Here, the slot from the FP index and the storage location is a one-to-one -one mapping. In the flash cache, we split the flash space into a metadata region and a data region. The slots in both metadata region and the data region are located via matching the slots inside the FP index. Since we have a one-to-one -one mapping scheme for the slots in the FP index and the cache space. For the metadata region, each slot stores the full FP and a list of full LBAs for one cached chunk. This information is used for validation against the hash collisions during matches in the in-memory index structures. In other words, we conclude a duplicate or a cache hit only after we validate the information in the metadata region against the curated LBA or FP. In the data region, we store the data of cached chunks. To manage compressed data, instead of using large fixed size units to pack the variable size compressed data together, we slice one compressed chunk into multiple fixed size subchunks. For example, we set the subchunk size as 8 KB bytes. Assume there is one 32 KB byte chunk that becomes 20 KB byte after compression. The chunk is firstly sliced into three subchunks with the first two subchunks 8 KB byte and the third one 4 KB byte. And then 
to pad the third subtrunk to 8 kb bytes so as to manage the 20 kb bytes compressed chunk as three 8 kb byte subtrunks. The advantages of using such a management are twofold. First of all, this design is compatible with our bucketization technique. We can manage the subchunks and the slots in our buckets. Second, this allows a per trunk management for cache replacement policies. Instead of requiring to kick out a group of trunks in a large fixed size unit during evictions. Specifically, one trunk now can take up multiple consecutive slots in the FP index. The number of consecutive slots represents the compressed length so that we don't maintain the compressed length explicitly in memory. Additionally, for slots in the metadata region, apart from the FP and the list of LBAs for the chunk, the compressed length is also recorded. As a result, there is no additional memory overhead for compressed length. The main idea of bucket-based cache replacement is to manage replacement policies for each bucket independently and combine recency and deduplication. By managing the cache replacement in each bucket, we can rearrange the slots and iterate over all the slots in one bucket with low overhead. Because the number of slots maintained in each bucket is small, for example, 128. As a result, the priority-based data structures, for example, LRU lists for cache decisions are enumerated. To combine both recency and deduplication, the LBA index adopts a list recently used policy and the FP index adopts a list referenced policy. For the list referenced policy, we maintain a weighted reference counter for the FPs. Specifically, we split the slots in each bucket of the LBA index equally in half by their recencies. The LBAs in the recent slot contribute two counts to their FPs, and the LBAs in the old slots contribute one count to their FPs. However, to maintain one counter for every FP hash, the reference counter incurs high memory overhead. We use count mean sketch, an approximate counting data structure, which provides fixed memory usage with provable error bounds to implement the reference counter. Specifically, count mean sketch is a two dimensional array of eight rows with each row consisting of W counters. An FP hash is mapped to one counter in each row via H independent hash functions. The counters record the total counts of all elements that has to it. To query the counts of one FP hash, counting sketch returns the minimum value of H counters the FP hash is mapped to. To evaluate Austery cache, we implement it as a user space block device with around 4.5K lines of C++ code in Linux. We replay both real-world trace and synthetic traces. For the real-world trace, we use FIU traces, which consist of web VM homes and mail workloads. For the synthetic traces, we vary IOD duplication ratio with write-to-read ratio, where the IOD duplication ratio is defined as the fraction of the duplicate, duplicate written chunks in all written chunks. We now compare, we also compare all story cache against cache dedupe and name the variants as ACD and ACDC for all story cache and CDLRUD, CDLRCD, and CDLRCDC for cache dedupe. The names of variants follow the pattern of the abbreviations of the design, the cache replacement algorithm, and the deduplication and compression feature. We first show that Austery cache achieves high memory savings compared with cache dedupe on the real-world traces. 
Without compression, ACD incurs more than 69.9% and 70.4% less memory across all traces than CDLRUD and CDARCD, respectively. When enabling compression, ACDC incurs more than 87% less memory than CDLCDC. Further breakdown evaluations that show the memory reduction of each technique can be found in our paper. We also evaluate the read hit ratios of austere cache and show austere cache also preserves high read hit ratios. For non compression design, ACD has up to 39.2% higher read hit ratio than CD LRUD, and similar read hit ratio as CD ARCD. When enabling compression, ACDC has up to 30.7% higher read hit ratio than CD ARCDC. The reason is that all story cache will combine recency and deduplication together and performs replacement in units of chunks rather than large fixed size units like CD ARCDC. We compare write reduction ratios, that is the percentage of written bytes reduced by deduplication and compression. This metric reflects the ability of all cache in reducing the I.O. overhead. We observe that ACD achieves comparable write reduction ratio as CDLRUD and CDARCD, which proves the benefits of deduplication. ACDC is also slightly lower than CDARCDC due to paddings. Nevertheless, all story cache still achieves considerable write reduction ratio by benefiting from compression. Further evaluations regarding the impacts of different parameters to the memory, read hit ratios, and write reduction ratios can be found in our paper. We further conduct two sets of experiments using synthetic traces to evaluate the throughput. The first is varying our deduplication ratio by fixing the write to read ratio as 7 to 3 which is a write-dominant workload as FIU traces. The second is varying write-to-read ratio while keeping the IOD duplication ratio as 50%. Overall, ACDC achieves highest throughput due to its high write reduction ratio and high read hit ratio. Comparing non-compression schemes, ACD achieves throughput only slightly lower than that of CDARCD. The reason is that ACD needs to access the metadata region for indexing. We also investigate the CPU overhead of all story cache. Note that the latencies of HDD and SSDs are reported by FIO tools on our test bed. While collecting latency numbers from 100 non duplicate requests during real world trace replay, we observe that Austria cache adds around 31.2 microseconds overhead, including fingerprint, compression, lookup, and update in memory indexing structures. Among the steps, the fingerprint costs most with 14.45 microseconds overhead. The latency for Austria cache can be further hidden via multi threading. We evaluate all story cache using synthetic traces by fixing the write to read ratio as 7 to 3. For 15% IOD duplication ratio, the speed up is 2.08 times, and for 80% IOD duplication ratio, the speed up increases to 2.51 times. Higher IOD duplication ratio implies less IO to flash and thus more computation savings which implies that the CPU overhead of all story cache is hidden via multi-threading. To conclude, we target the deduplicated and compressed flash cache. Specifically, we address the memory amplification problem via three techniques, bucketization, fixed size, compressed data management, 
and bucket-based cash replacement. Our project is now open sourced for further research. This is all I got. Thanks for your watching.